Show me that. Yes, yeah, so today I'm really super happy to introduce Anne, which is not me, uh, but uh, um, Andy Steele, which is from <coughs> the Turing Way. And uh, I think I was reading your um, your CV and, and I was like, wow. So you are now the community manager for the Turing Way project at the Alan Turing Institute, but you are doing, you have done a lot of things. Uh, I didn't know you have done so much because you look so young. So uh, just to name a few open ecosystem projects you have been working on, uh, like the Internet Society, Wikimedia Deutschland, Open Knowledge Foundation. Wow, I'm super impressed. And I'm really looking forward to hear from you, Anne, uh, about the Turing Way. And if you don't know what is the Turing Way, I'm 100% sure you will know a lot by the end of Anne's talk. And you will have the opportunity to ask questions. So, Anne, the floor is yours. Thank you so much also, Anne, for the very generous introduction. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with you all uh, today. Thank you for taking the time on your Friday afternoon or your evening or wherever you're calling from. Um, I'm gonna take a moment here to share my screen. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, there are no issues here. All right, can you see, all see my screen all right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so as, as Anne said previously, uh, my name is Anne. I am the com uh, community manager for the Turing Way. Um, and over the course of the next 15 minutes or so, I will do my best to kind of take us on a zoom through, you know, the Turing Way as a project, which you might have heard about um, over the course of uh, the reproducibility, the kind of reproducibility challenge, um, or you might have heard about it in different contexts. And I really tried to kind of tease out a couple of different aspects of the project um, and the way in which we aim to support reproducible, inclusive, and collaborative data science, um, which hopefully by the end of this talk, we'll see is really tied to kind of every aspect of research itself. So one thing to flag here um, is that we are hosted at the Alan Turing Institute, um, which is the UK's National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. Um, but we are hosted by, but not exclusive to. Um, again, the, the Turing Way as a project and as a community really collaborates um, with researchers and experts really all across the world. And um, while we receive resources and support and personnel, such as myself, um, from the Turing, uh, we're a part of a much broader ecosystem and network of folks that extend far beyond the UK. Uh, and so, of course, um, I, I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, um, but we kind of have to, in order to talk about the Turing Way, kind of take us back into the beginning of the kind of foundation of where the project started, um, and then maybe take us into where we are now and how it's expanded over the course of the past four years that the Turing Way has been around. Um, and don't worry if you don't know what the Turing Way is yet, we'll talk about it in a second. So the Turing Way as a project um, really kind of uh, emerge around this time of really the, the crisis of reproducibility in science. So as you know, um, really kind of pushed back or created a kind of crisis of trust in, in the research process itself. And it was initially very much associated with the fields of psychology and medicine, but it's pervasive across many scientific fields, including that of climate science. Um, and there are many incentives and structures that enable um, enabled and perpetuated this crisis of reproducibility, such as the, the pressure to publish or perish. Um, but maybe one upside of, of this crisis is that it has very much fueled the open science movement and really enabled it to kind of catch on steam as we've really very much seen over the course of the past um, couple of years. Um, really that this need of you know, making science reproducible, ethical, um, open for, for more folks. And we've really seen those questions around reproducibility, interestingly enough, also being applied uh, within the AI spa space, which has really, again, become much more visible over the course of the past number of months. Again, preaching to the choir here, um, but reproducibility being when the same analysis is applied to the same data, it should give the same result. And this is to be distinguished between the process of replicability uh, robustness and generalizability of one's data. But 
it was really kind of amidst these questions of amidst the need to make these distinctions, right, between reproducibility and replicability and generalizability, for example, that Dr. Kirstie Whitaker, um, who is the program lead of the Tools, Practices, and Systems program, really gathered together a kind of group of allies, both within the internal and uh, within the Turing and externally, to really ask, you know, is there any space or any place where these best practices could be contained, or really uh, any place where we could co-create uh, these kind of um, guides together or these um, collect these best practices together around uh, reproducibility amidst this crisis. And from there, uh, the, the guide for reproducible research emerged that really contained everything from practices around um, the different tools that you might use in order to enable reproducible research, um, the types of working practices that may be needed, um, what reproducibility might even look like, and the, the, the charts that I showed you earlier, I'm really trying to kind of tease out what responding to this crisis of reproducibility might look like. Um, what a, a set of resources might look like to support that could be. But it soon became quite clear that you really couldn't talk about reproducibility without talking about many other aspects of science, um, about the research process, about who might be involved, um, about the foundation of how you're working with your data, about your team, by the collaborative practices that you use. And it was really with the addition of Dr. Monica Sharon, who's the community manager before me, um, now a co-lead of the project, that really saw the Turing Way expand into not just one guide for reproducible research, but really into the five different guides. So you see this guide for reproducible research emerge, a guide for project design emerge, for communication, for collaboration, for ethical research. And alongside that, a kind of meta guide uh, called a community handbook really emerging to kind of collect the practices that were being used as a community so that other folks might use it across this kind of broader open ecosystem. So you really see this the Turing way, um, which are now kind of beginning to unpack, right, as a, a series of guides related to, to open research, really becoming uh, a collection of guidance um, made by and for folks that work with data. Um, and, and something that we're increasingly saying is that, you know, the way it's not a Turing way, it's not a best practice actually per se, but rather um, it's a journey, it's a set of rules. Um, it's a set of practices that we are co-creating, um, documenting together. And this one kind of way of reproducibility has become many different ways of collaborating and, and doing open research together. But we're going to take it a, a little bit further here, um, because over the course of the past four years, we've really seen the expansion of this project and of this community grow um, to over 400 computer uh, contributors and over 400 computers that contribute to the Turing Way, um, as well as increase in the number of, of folks um, uh, supporting the project um, in an operational way. More than 30 folks doing that. Um, been very uh, lucky to receive a couple of awards, be cited in articles, you know, be replicated and um, in different forms uh, and to really support, again, a much broader ecosystem of folks who are already working on these issues and working alongside them, again, contributing to a much broader ecosystem. And really, if there's also one thing that I'll flag here is that all of the images that you're seeing throughout this presentation are all available for download and use on Zenodo. Um, they're under a CC by license, so you're free to use it for your own work as well. Um, and we've seen that it's that has enabled other folks um, right here on the corner to be able to, to use these resources for their projects as well. But you know, over the course of this expansion of the, the four plus years of the Turing Way um, being a kind of collection of, of practices used in open resource research, um, we've really seen it become a global resource. Um, over the course of the past year, we've really seen that the Turing Way has actually been accessed in almost every country except for four, um, which is a sign that, you know, as we've been able to collaborate with folks to be able to collect resources, collect best practices, collect um, and bring together folks from across different domains to be able to document um, practices that work for them, you know, we've become this kind of global um, commons, global knowledge commons, for people to be able to um, contribute to and co-create um, a resource around their needs and research. And um, you might have heard of the crisis of the commons, perhaps like the crisis of reproducibility. It's a response uh, to that notion by Garrett Hardin, 
Um, the crisis of the commons is this notion that a shared resource would always fall prey to overuse and extraction. And so I bring this up because as we entered this kind of fourth year of the project over the course of this expansion from one guide into five different guides, um, that's where I joined in. And we've seen with this expansion of the Turing Way, really the question around, you know, how do we create and sustain a, a knowledge commons? Uh, what does sustainability as our community, um, as a community very much look like? Uh, because a failure of the commons more broadly is more so due to notions of management, of governance, of access, not a failure of the notion of the commons itself. Um, if the Turing Way is meant to be a global knowledge commons for all sorts of different practices related to data science and open research, what does that mean? Um, and how does that support reproducible, ethical, inclusive, accessible data science? And originally, the way in which we investigated those questions were really around our kind of classic pathways for contribution um, around, you know, who was developing and sharing the resource, who was maintaining and improving it, um, who was sharing it uh, within their communities, who was reviewing and updating them, um, making uh, the resource global and accessible for all, who was sharing it um, in different contexts. But Again, we've really seen that expansion actually um, over the course of the past year in a much kind of broader questions too, because there are many different types of, uh, of uh, because similar to how reproducibility is enabled by shifting the entire research process, um, understanding how we can support a global resource also asks much broader questions of what conditions and what support are needed in order to, to make that resource actually globally accessible. And so I'll kind of zoom, I'll spend a little bit of time here, um, maybe explaining kind of these different aspects of the project that have emerged in turn, and, and that we really aim to kind of support and, and steward. Um, the localization and translation team really emerged over the course of the past couple of years with the aim to answer the question, you know, how can a resource in a project like the Turing Way be accessible for a global community? Um, the Turing Way was um, and is primarily written in the English language, right? And so much of the way in which um, science operates, by default, um, operates in an Anglophone context. And so if we're actually to talk about being a global resource for a global community of open researchers, how open are we actually when linguistically, culturally, um, we may be perpetuating the same um, kind of uh, use of, of English in every context. And so with the localization and translation team, which emerged from the community, um, we've really seen that kind of an attempt to answer that question, right, to support and really connect with other folks that are aiming to translate and localize um, uh, both the Turing Way, but more broadly, open research practices for different respective sociolinguistic contexts. So going beyond, you know, how can a resource be translated into another language, but also how can a resource be contextualized for the culture in which the culture, the environment, um, the context in which it might be most useful. Alongside that, we've also seen, you know, bigger questions too emerging around, you know, how can we recognize all kinds of different roles within research? So much of the Turing Way and in, in, as it grew as a, as a project really asked questions around, you know, um, who is a part of the research process, going beyond the PI and the graduate student, the postdoc, the, um, the ECR, you know, what suite of roles and labor and work and positions contribute to that work, but it may not be recognized as such. Um, that being, for example, librarians or data stewards, or even community managers like myself. Uh, there are so many different types of roles that contribute to the research process, and are they recognized as part of that kind of um, social infrastructure behind, uh, behind the research process. Alongside that, um, as a project that relies upon um, a lot of open source um, infrastructure on the technical side of things, we've also asked, you know, what does supporting that infrastructure look like? Um, what is supporting the people who maintain that infrastructure look like? Um, we're an open source project. We build upon and use GitHub. Um, we host all of our resources there. Um, we are hosted on JupyterBook. Um, but again, this the question of support uh, is really one that extends much more broadly into the open source ecosystem. There are packages that we use as computational researchers that have maybe one maintainer um, who may be uh, burnt out, stressed out, maybe overstretched in their different contexts. And, 
again, if we're to ask how accessible are we as a as a global community, how can we not contribute back to that ecosystem that we ourselves rely upon? And I'll kind of zoom through uh, a number of these, uh, but the practitioners hub, um, which really was, is kind of being incubated and started in 2023, um, asked questions around how do we collaborate with industry? How do we connect researcher perspectives to industry perspectives uh, to topic specific fields? Um, given that the resource has been much more generally focused, how do we plan inclusive events um, in our book dash, uh, which is a biannual contribution event? I'm happy to talk more about at a later time. It's happening next week. Um, we're also asking questions, you know, on the contribution side of how do we make contribution to the project too easy not to do it as it, as it has expanded um, so much? How do we uh, use these resources in order to enable that they can be used for training and mentoring context, not only at ECRs, but really at, for researchers at every stage? Um, how can we make sure that this is a resource that remains useful and accessible for all? Um, very excited to say too that a recent initiative that we've also been partnering with um, Alejandro from the Environmental Data Science book as an example of what does partnering with a like a topic specific field, a community that's already doing work um, and has expertise um, in uh, climate related questions that really extend across all fields um, and have implications for all forms of research. Um, how can we support and connect with that kind of work? Um, how can, again, we be a part of a much broader ecosystem? And finally, another recent initiative around is around that of accessibility um, in every sense of the word. Um, how can we, as a, as a web-based resource, be something that people can access, whether through screen readers, whether um, using any type of uh, technology that might be available to them or not, right? Um, how can we actually, again, be a resource that is globally accessible, available, and able to be contributed to by folks that have all sorts of different lived experiences um, and ways of, of, um, ways of existing? And, and how can we enable and support that work to contribute to the terrain? Right? So, you know, with all those things that I've thrown at you about, you know, the questions that we're asking within the community, creating a kind of knowledge commons that is able to address these really complex questions, right, that go beyond research to perhaps even our societies at large, really requires on a fundamental level kind of changing research culture. And the kind of first step for us for that, in, in that sense, has been, you know, in acknowledgement in recognizing these different types of questions that have emerged within the community more broadly, these different types of questions that have emerged within um, the within the project and ex extend them outwards to support that kind of work. Um, but recognition is only the first step. Acknowledging that type of work is only the first step. Another, the, the kind of second step after that, right, goes beyond to, you know, what does dis sharing decision-making power look like? What does the open leadership look like um, as a project that actually aims to go beyond recognizing the different types of labor be within a project to providing resources, road mapping, roles, support um, to enable that work to happen on folks' own terms and in their own expertise and lived experience. Um, and it's a difficult balance. And it's one that uh, we're very much in the process of, of figuring out right now together too. And finally, we can't really talk about all of these elements without acknowledging and recognizing the, the broader societal structures that enable and perpetuate um, research culture, right? And that's tied to our broader working conditions, that's tied to, you know, the, what types of roles are recognized and given priority within research, but it's tied to our societies at large. Um, and so the questions that we asked within the community of the Turing Way, um, within the open ecosystem, within the research ecosystem, within our societies are all very much interlinked and we can't necessarily separate all of them, especially um, given the audience too in the context of the climate crisis. So I'll kind of leave you all with maybe two, two three more slides. Uh, so much of answering these questions around um, how we sustain and maintain the community, how we enable reproducible, ethical, open research really aims to move at the speed of trust, um, the trust of folks within the community, the trust of folks who um, maintain the resource, who use the resource, um, because you know, having a global collaboration in any context takes really intentional care. Um, and we really wanna move first with a sustainability mindset um, 
in the first place. Secondly, an invitation to join us at some point. Um, we'd love to see you at one of our uh, community calls. Uh, I will plug uh, the collaboration cafes that happen on the first and third Wednesday of the month, uh, which are a really wonderful space where you can meet um, many different folks from across these communities of communities that are emerging within the project. Um, meet some nice folks, um, maybe participated in a style of open event online that you might not have previously. We also have a translation co-working call um, that happens on Tuesdays and a number of uh, emerging calls as well um, around topics of infrastructure maintenance and accessibility uh, that are being incubated and will be open shortly. As well as finally, um, participation perhaps in the outreach program or the book dash, um, our biannual kind of contribution sprint. And so finally, um, Really with all of these ideas, again, going back to the sustainability first sort of mindset, the Turing Way really as a community, as a project um, for all of us really asks, you know, can we move beyond this notion of move fast and breaking things, which has dominated both the culture of research, uh, the culture of science, the culture of technology um, more broadly to an, an idea of rather, you know, rather than moving fast and breaking things, can we collaborate? Can we move slowly? Can we maintain things? Um, and can we prioritize that? So with that, thank you all for, for listening to this speed talk uh, through the ecosystem of the Turing Way. Um, thank you so much to the broader team. I'm representing a much larger group of folks that contribute to the Turing Way. Um, check us out in any of these links uh, and hope to see you in a community call sometime soon. Looking forward to any questions you might have.